So, my story starting point is set about 50,000 years ago, before things like weaving or a lot of other clothing options existed. This meant that I had to work with a lot more unusual materials when designing a look for my cavemen. One of my design decisions was to include dark paint under the eyes to protect from snow glare during winters, and heavy fur pelts as clothing. Accessorizing with different materials was paramount, and since beadwork is one of the oldest forms of decoration, I went all out on using them as hair accessories, necklaces, and bracelets. While bone sewing needles and perforators technically did exist at the time, I played with the idea of stitchless pelts as clothes instead. I also used the idea of woven grass in order to fashion leg warmers. They also wouldn't have had shoes until about 5,000 years later, so barefoot it has to be. Finally, here's Tala as she'll first look in the beginning of 250,000 AHS. So, it turns out I may have gone about all this a little backwards. So for those who have no idea what I've been doing up until now, and new viewers alike, here's an outline of my general world concept so far. It all started with the idea to build an entire culture from scratch, from the early stone age all the way to the modern day. And with that came the idea of an immortal whose story we could follow in order to see that cultural identity as it grew and changed throughout the generations. So you might have recognized our main character here, Tala, our swell, cheery POV throughout the eras, who I'm gonna... It's the best part of writing, the timelines! Since I kinda wanted to span from the very beginning of Homo sapiens existence, I set up the story to span from the very beginning of the Stone Age to the modern day. And at first I thought that would be about 50 generations or so, you know? But uh, yeah, um, no, let's try a million generations instead. So I narrowed it down to 50,000 years between the modern day and the Upper Paleolithic period. Not so bad, but still a really long time. So with Wikipedia's timeline of historic inventions open, I worked my way through the major pillars of development up till my starting point, and set up this nifty starting point index to develop the major parts of my Stone Age. And ta-da! There's the beginnings of my story timeline. Meet Tala, our main character. Born in about 250,000 years, AHS, deep in the Stone Age, Tala undergoes <clears throat> and becomes immortal. Through her will follow an entire world as it grows, shifts, evolves and changes both in cultures, borders, empires and religions. Now I understand this is a massive undertaking that's going to take a long time to complete. But so far, I've really enjoyed brainstorming aesthetics, religions, and social structures for different areas throughout this hypothetical region. And I hope that through Tala here, I can provide an interesting look into a creative process. And I hope you guys watching can enjoy it too. Why is our main character called Tala? Tala is our eyes and ears into this world for the next 50,000 years or so. So when looking for a name that would suit the character I had in mind for her, I found Tala. Tala is a name meaning stalking wolf and is Native American in origin. Not exactly relevant, but what's interesting is that in Tagalog mythology, Tala is the goddess of the morning and evening star. In Polynesia, it means story or tale. In Persian and Farsi, it means gold. And in Arabic, it's the name of the turmeric tree. In Swedish, Norwegian, Danish and Icelandic, it is the oldest Scandinavian version of the name Edelheidus. Basically, Tala seems to be an incredibly universal name with a million origins, and is perfect for a character who's going to live through the rise of a hundred civilizations, no? But honestly, I was just playing with the name Talia, found out she was a Batman character, and just tweaked the letters. Do you want to see something really cool? If you don't know, Dogland was basically a piece of land in between the British Isles and France, and basically it got completely flooded over a period of time. And so what happened was there was this massive flood, and then over the next about 700 years, the entire area slowly started flooding. And look at the, <laughs> the time that Dogland is finished being engulfed by water is around the exact same time that sailboats were developed. <laughs> which is the coolest thing that I've found so far. <laughs> As Tala and her clan will be hunter-gatherer nomads, they'll likely have traveled light, and probably not in massive groups, or at least in Tala's case, her clan will consist only of about eight people tops. 
these characters are going to shape Tala's early character, so it's pretty important that they have a good dynamic and bounce off well with our main character. Societally, the clan, being so small, will be pretty egalitarian, and while historically gender norms between foragers and hunters were enforced, it wasn't too unusual to have the jobs be interchangeable between genders, so we're gonna go with that. Nomadic is also the word to use here. The clan will have to travel light and often, probably only carrying enough to set up light camps and tools to gather food. So, yeah. So, let's talk about traveling during the Stone Age. Over a about the entirety of human existence, our species has traveled as far as possible, even when all they could use to travel were their own two feet. By our starting point, humans have spread across Africa and have pretty much invaded Eurasia and Australia. How? <laughs> Apparently through long-term maritime voyages across the ocean, utilizing insane deep sea fishing techniques. But what does that all mean for our story? Tala and her family are most likely going to be traveling a lot in their lives, by foot, throughout Europe, as hunter-gatherer groups. But why is the question we can ask here. What drives them to travel? Is it looking for greener pastures, a promised land? Are they just following prey? Uh, there's a million fascinating angles we could use here, but that's still up to decide. As a follow-up to my Stone Age travel post, I wanted to quickly set up the hunter-gatherer way of life for Tala and her clan. Hunter-gatherer groups are pretty basic. As agriculture hadn't been developed yet, their only access to food was through foraging and hunting. Foraging can branch out into roots, fruits, berries, veggies, edible bark, ants, honey, and a massive range of assorted plant life. They also wouldn't have been opposed to scavenging too. Can't be picky when the other option is starvation, I guess. <laughs> For hunting, humans are primarily persistence hunters, where they'll follow their prey, not letting it eat, drink or rest over the course of days until the prey finally either gets slow enough to catch or collapses from overheating or fatigue. Using these methods, early man thrived for centuries, and that's how Tala and her nomad clan will live at the beginning of the story. 